Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to paint a Salamander Space Marine for Warhammer 30k, the Horus Heresy. This could easily be translated to uh, Warhammer 40k. But the settings don't change that much the color scheme and it's pretty much the same thing. So you can use this uh, video to do either of them. This is part of my Warhammer 30k The Horus Heresy painting series. I'm looking forward to painting the rest of the models that I haven't. And if you like it, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'm going to start by priming the model in grey and I'm going to use a Vallejo Surface Primer Grey through an airbrush. Uh, I like the airbrush because it uh, gives a smoother finish and it's easier to uh, apply, although it may take a little bit more time. You can use any primer that you like, uh, as long as it's a, a light color. It could be uh, gray or white or even a green if you find one that is uh, close to the base coat that we're going to use. And the first color that I'm going to use is War Flesh. And with this color, I'm going to paint the whole power armor of this miniature. Uh, these greens don't cover too well, especially over uh, even white or light gray like this. So you have to give it at least two coats. And I'm moving quickly and applying this color around the model, make sure, making sure to uh, thin down the color a little bit so that I don't apply it too thick. After two coats, I'm going to use Warpstone Glow. And this is going to be the base color that we need. If you find a primer that is this color, and you can use that uh, either through an airbrush or through uh, the, uh, a can of primer, that would make this process a lot easier. But if not, just give it two coats uh, as we did with the other base coat, and we're going to be good. Make sure to apply your layers thin and quickly, and let them to dry before you apply more paint, because you can break those layers if you tamper with them. I'm going to use Avedon Black to paint the shoulder pads and every other bit that I want to be black. On Salamanders, uh, I've seen many people do the whole backpack in black, so I'm going to do that. And the shoulder pads. You can pick up the knee pads or any other details that you like. And also, of course, the bolter. If you want to base coat at this point, the places that are going to be silver, uh, you can do that. It's not necessary, but it's easier to cover black with silver than it is to cover it the lighter color with silver for some reason. Next, with Build Tan Green, I'm going to shade all of the recesses of the green parts with a fine detail brush. I'm trying to get only on the recesses and being very careful and very clean about it. You can shade the whole thing and then come back and clean up all of the open areas and leave the recesses uh, shaded with this color. But because uh, green is not a very good uh, color for covering, over other colors. I decided to just leave it like this. Uh, with some colors you can do that, but most of the difficult colors to cover, it's better to use uh, wash only in the recesses instead of uh, shading the whole thing. Next with Mood Green, I'm going to edge highlight the whole power armor. And this is a very uh, time consuming step uh, for every Space Marine uh, legion that you want to edge highlight. Um, you can do without it if uh, you're not going for a high standard of quality, but if you can pick up all of the edges like this uh, with a fine detail brush and a little bit of drying retarder so that the paint stays wet for longer and it's easier to edge highlight, uh, you can do that. Um, it's very easy to b do very big edge highlights, so be careful. Just pick all of the edges and try to do as fine as a line as you can. Next, I'm using Lead Belcher and with this color I'm going to base coat uh, some details here and there that I want to be silver. Uh, some of the details that should be silver can be black or most of the details can be black if you like. Uh, it really depends on what look you're going for with your salamanders. But I picked some of the details on the backpack, all of the tubing and little uh, rivets or whatever things they are on the knee pad right there and also the bolter. Next I'm going to use Balthasar gold and with this color I'm going to paint all of the gold details. Uh, with salamanders it's just small details here and there. I wanted to pick the uh, shoulder pads and small emblems and stuff like that just very quickly. 
Some salamanders don't have the, their shoulders painted in gold. Uh, you can leave them green if you like, uh, but I'm going for gold because I think it looks cool. Next, with edge and gray, I'm going to start edge highlighting the black with this color. And I'm going to do the same technique as what I did in the armor, just trying to pick all of the most prominent edges and um, make them stand out a little bit more with the gray color instead of just black. Uh, I really like the way this uh, highlight looks on black. I think it looks pretty good. Make sure to wash your brush every couple minutes or every minute or so, uh, just to make sure that the paint is not uh, drying on the tip of your brush. It will do it even though you're using drying retarder. The drying retarder is not gonna completely prevent it, but it's gonna help. After that, I'm going to use Dawnstone. And with this color, I'm just going to pick the sharpest edges of the black. Uh, this gives a very bright, uh, extreme highlight that makes the black edges stand out a lot more. Uh, you want to edge highlight those edges because uh, you need a way to differentiate between one black surface and the other and picking up those edges really make uh, you your eye catch the form of the black uh, a lot better. Here I'm going to use Nolan Oil and I'm going to wash all of the black places on the armor real quick just making sure that it gets into all of the crevices on the silver details and just uh, tint uh, any other uh, um, detail that is silver on the vents of on the back of the backpack you can only uh, wash the recesses if you like you don't really have to shade the whole thing and after that i'm going to use reclan flesh shade to shade all of the gold details around the model these are very few and you only need to pick all of the details that have uh, prominent uh, recesses and stuff you don't really need to uh, shade the trimming where it's very uh, narrow and very thin because it doesn't have any recesses to go to so it really doesn't matter the edge is black so it's not gonna show really here I'm using Stormhost Silver because it's one of the most brightest silvers that there are in the Games Workshop range uh, you can use uh, Runefang Steel as well it's a pretty good color pretty good shining color and I'm going to edge highlight all the places there that are silver just to give them a little pop. Once it's done, I'm going to use Hashnut Copper on the gold. And because this is a fairly uh, reddish uh, golden copper color, and I want the edges of the shoulder pads to be uh, copper-ish, you can use any other color that is brass or whatever color you like, but I associate the copper color with uh, burning for some reason and the reddish tint makes it look uh, contrast with the green armor. Next, I'm going to use Wild Rider Red. With this color, I'm going to paint the lenses real quick. I could use Mephiston Red as a very dark uh, beginning for the lenses, uh, but because we, I didn't want to add another color, I used the colors that I'm going to use for the fire. After the lens is completely covered with the Wild Rider Red, I'm going to use Averland Sunset. And with this color, I'm going to paint uh, about a little bit more than half of the front part of the lens. After that, I'm using Aerial Yellow to put a little dot of this yellow on the very front of the lens. And to finish it off, I'm going to use white. And I'm going to put a little dot of white on the back part of the lens to give it a little reflection of light. I think I didn't make a very good job uh, recording this step. I think I failed, but I'm going to do it off camera. After that's done, I'm going to use Mephiston Red and I'm going to start uh, drawing in the pattern of the flames. You don't really need to be very clean or neat. You just need to uh, make sure to end the flame tongues in a bit as fine as a point as you can and make them broader uh, as they approach the bottom edge and just uh, go to town with it just uh, have fun painting like these little s shapes and start filling up the shoulder pad and i, I also used it on the boot but it's not really that uh, hard the, the hard part is to get a good consistency so that it uh, looks uh, it covers well 
and it doesn't leave any uh, like brush marks. So make sure to thin it down a little bit more than you would usually, but not too much because if it's too runny, it's not gonna work. Here I'm using Wild Rider Red and I'm uh, further uh, highlighting this area, just leaving a little bit of the red on the very top part and trying to paint the rest of the flame with this color. And we're going to be highlighting a little bit more and more towards the bottom of the flame until we get to white. Here I'm using a Fire Dragon Bright and I'm doing the next step, leaving a little bit of the previous colors behind and like in layers, obviously. Each color I applied about three times. Uh, it's not very difficult because it's a, a fairly quick step to do. Uh, but make sure to use uh, obviously thin layers and start applying the color and if it doesn't cover too well or, or if it looks patchy, just let it dry and apply another layer once it's dry and um, just to find the opacity that you are comfortable with or full opacity as you can see it. Next, I'm going to use Aerial Yellow and I'm going to uh, pick up a little bit less even area than the last step, leaving the other colors behind. And this is going to really give the flame a very yellowish uh, tint that is going to look very good. But the thing that is going to make it stand out even more is the white. And with this color, I'm not gonna do it the same way that I did the others. I want the yellow to be more prevalent. So I'm just going to edge highlight the bottom edge of these flames with this color, just to make it look very, very hot. And try to make as fine as a line as you can. Uh, I really need to get a, a, another fine detail brush this one is wearing out a lot it's very old it's the last generation brush and i had a little bit of a difficulty but i think it turned out pretty well so that's it this is the end result and i'm very happy with the way it turned out salamanders is one very handsome uh, color scheme that you can paint and i see why many people gravitate towards it and it has very nice rules as well and i'm very happy with the way it turned out the only difficult part is that green uh, can be a color that doesn't cover too well this might be only my experience with green, but uh, if you find that it doesn't uh, cover that well, just apply layers and it doesn't matter if they're patchy, just to make sure that they're thin and apply them quickly and let them, let them dry and apply more layers until uh, you find the opacity. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. If you find this video helpful and entertaining, just uh, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell so that you don't miss any of my tutorials. I already have a schedule to what videos I'm going to do next, but if you have any suggestions of what you would like to see painted, leave them in the comments below. If you want to send me a miniature to paint, you can contact me through Facebook. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for supporting my channel and if you would like to become a patron, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel at any time. If you can't, don't worry, you can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.